Hey everyone, this video is just going to break down how to navigate the console. So right now we're just looking at our home view, which is considered multi-view. And I'm just going to explain how things are laid out, how to get to things, and the, some of the different other uh, workflows so we can also see the same information just in a different way. So for starters, the top portion up here is our main uh, navigation widget. So if I pull this up, look at faders, this will kind of help just visualize what we're looking at. So here's channels 1 through 8, 9 through 16. And if I select here, I'm now just cycling through the different channels. So we're looking at input channels. I can also look at the auxes as well. So the same set of faders can look at both inputs and outputs just depending on what we're looking at. Go back to inputs. I'll pull that down. You have your VCA right here. So there's 24 VCAs. Uh, they haven't been populated yet, but if you just press and hold, that's how you can populate them. So I would just tap whatever channels I want to go into this VCA and I can click to rename it, color it, all that. So I can do that right from here. I'm actually just going to I'm going to empty the group. So some buttons are a, a tap and hold. So for example, to empty that group is one of those. We'll just close out. So there's our VCAs. Pop groups, same thing. You can look at those or access them and populate them from here. I'll just empty the group, close out. Uh, and then on our flip target, we, ha we can look at the auxes right here. And in fact, when we select these, it actually selects uh, an aux. So we actually look at an output. If I go back over here, it's like the channel and an input at the same time. So now we can get into um, our input and output widgets. But just to finish up this section, there's uh, tags and pops, uh, clipped channels. So if you have any channels that have clipped, they'll show up here. And you can actually, if you tap that, um, whichever channels did clip will populate here. And then you can press this trim by 0 0.05 or by 0 0.5 a dB. So kind of a cool function there. We're just going to reselect, look at our inputs again. Uh, bus setup. So from here, we can select our buses. Um, this is where I can link them, can uh, do several things in here. And the same information is also in this configuration tab. So just another way of looking at it. You know, maybe we are actually uh, having our faders up here so we can, uh, you know, depending on what we're looking at, this might be useful for this section. That's what I'm trying to get at. And then overall uh, meter bridge. So you can look at your different VCAs, different pops, etc. Okay, we'll go back to overview. Now if we look at our input widget, so if I'm looking at channel 1 here, uh, it's going to start with, uh, you'll have a column on the left hand side um, going over configuration. So this is where we can turn up the preamp gain, the tr digital trim, polarity, fan power, uh, input delay scheme. Uh, if we want to turn this channel into an aux return, uh, we'll go into that later, but we would take that to make sure that we want that done. Um, Overall pan right here. Let's go into the stereo bus or not. That would be this button. Uh, and then if we wanted to utilize this for solo B. So we do have a solo A and a solo B. So if I engage that, if I solo, then it will show up in my solo B monitor bus. Um, more in-depth uh, linking options here. So mono link. So link will keep these two faders separate, but they will be ganged. Stereo will collapse them f to make just one stereo channel. So, for example, if I select channel one, hold down stereo, uh, one and two are now collapsed. And then I can have mirrored pan, 
So whatever I do on one side and does it to the other, I can link these. So now they're just back to um, say mono faders that are ganged, or I can separate them and have them be mono again with independent pan. So, boop. And there we go. Okay. Uh, right here is uh, linking options. So if you don't want to have everything linked, you can deselect these. So pretty powerful. Patching. This will just show us where things are patched. So once we have, an, you know, uh, input coming from an I.O. box, if we have inserts, if we're using direct outputs, um, all of that will be uh, lit up green, and it'll actually show you the destinations and where they're feeding. Direct out. This is where we can just choose at what processing point we want the direct out to be taken. Um, all direct outputs are muted until they're patched, so um, it won't do anything until you actually patch that. And options is the processing order of the channel itself. So maybe you want to actually have EQ before dynamics. You can just grab them and move them around. If you need to safe anything, you can do that right here. So that's configuration. EQ. There's our four band parametric with uh, high and low uh, shelves. So you can easily grab them, um, but might be better to do that in channel view when it's larger. We'll go into that later. Gate, we'll turn the gate on. We can start grabbing the threshold, just as you would expect. You have a gate or a ducker function compressor. Um, cool thing, uh, the carryover from Pro Series is the different modes. So corrective, adaptive, creative, and vintage with a both uh, hard, medium, and soft knees for those. Also have sidechain filtering um, capability as well. So either by frequency or by um, going to patching and actually doing uh, a key input. effects. So right from the channel is where we can do our inserts. So if I just hit add here and channel one, kick, maybe we want to just throw on, I don't know, something. Dynamic, uh, wave designer. As soon as we throw that in there, it is inserted and turned on. And we can do this up to three times to maintain of face coherency and in perfect time to other channels that don't have any inserts in them. And lastly, um, our aux sends. So from here, um, I can select where I want them to go. You have a send level and turn them up. Uh, if they're stereo, I can pan between them. If I just want to send them unity, I can press and hold and now that sends them at zero dB. Uh, maybe for broadcast application. So I actually had three of them selected. So I'm going to turn that one down. And we'll do the same for these as well. Uh, the different tap points. So by default is uh, end of chain, which is post fader. And nice thing here is you can have some auxes going to you know post filter, uh, I can have other auxes going to a different tap point, uh, and that is on a channel by channel basis. So I had a video, uh, made a video about Mancino where you can do that globally, um, but we can also just do individual tap points per channel feeding uh, whatever bus we want. So we can do that as well. So that's the input widget in multi view. Uh, the output, very similar. Configuration, EQ, compressor, so no gate on an output. There's your three effect slots. You actually have a return B function here as well. Um, do we have that on here? Oh, we do have on inputs as well. So return B is kind of cool if um, you can have an alternate signal path. So let's say you had some outboard gear that you're feeding from your aux. So you're going into 
you know, some LA-2A or anything that's cool that is outboard, and um, something happens, lose a signal, you can have a backup um, you know, effect in the effects rack or another external unit that um, you can just engage, and that would then in, uh, complete the uh, insert return uh, loop. So long-winded way of saying that there's a, a return B function. Contributors. So this is pretty cool. So when we look at an aux, we can see what channels are feeding that aux. So inputs and outputs, we can look at all of them. Um, contributor controls, you can send the pan links. Um, all contributors, you can send them as pre or post. So really cool visual aid here and easily be able to see what is feeding uh, your auxes. And then sends. So being that it is an aux, um, I can go to the 24 matrices. However, auxes, we actually have this new function called flexi aux. So if I press and hold, I can actually turn this aux into a flexi, which puts it in time after a channel, but before an aux. So now if I go to sends, I can actually send to any other aux, except for itself, because we wouldn't want to do that. So that's one thing coming from, say, Pro Series to HD that users are going to find, is you now have a whole new bus level that you can route things to. So that is a flexi aux. Um, in here, you also, in configuration, you have group mode. So if you're going to make some subgroups, you want to include that. And if you want to send the pan, so I encourage you to, if you're going to do group mode, let's say press and hold function, turn that on, send pan link. So whatever um, panning, if this is a stereo, uh, say this is a stereo subgroup, whatever channels feeding to that, you want to maintain the stereo imaging and as well from the bus to the stereo bus, if you wanted to feed it that way. So that will maintain all the stereo imaging for that. Um, yeah, linking, patching, all that similar. Uh, channel view is just effectively the same stuff, just presented differently. So here's our EQ. You just have a much larger EQ to, um, to work with. Configuration, uh, the ability to process, to change the processing order is just more of visible now. Um, yeah, same with the compressor, the contributor. So if you have some big, big mixes going on, you could see everything that's feeding them and then just a visual, uh, larger display of the sends. Front of house view is kind of cool. What it does is it shifts things around, so it makes the console navigation smaller, um, and it moves your input widget to the top right. So what you can do now is if you had a busy mix going on, you can now use uh, this tray. Um, we'll have more information. You know, when you have music coming in, these will all be moving, um, and then you can still control your channel parameters. You can navigate the console from here still. Um, select the channels here, um, being that it is the offline editor. So um, just another work view that is cool. Console view, more of just a, uh, an overview of sorts. I can still navigate the fader layers, the surface itself. Um, if I hover over macros, you can see them uh, from the fader, from the gain attenuation and gain reduction. So automation. Uh, right now, we don't have anything going on in this show, but if I had um, <clears throat> a large show here, uh, maybe I would want to just stay in mix in this show. Especially if I had, you know, MIDI triggers and you know, crossfades and all sorts of things, and we'll get into um, automation at a later time where we deep dive that. But um, yeah, this will give you console navigation on the top left, uh, input widget on the bottom left. Works out. 
Uh, and then Mancino, which um, check out that video if you haven't already. We go through that. And overall, that is effectively how just to navigate the desk um, using the widgets from multi view and channel view and touching on the rest. So, anyway, thank you. And uh, we'll see you again.